let's talk about money. One of the reasons that I created the basic financial education course was that most of us never got a solid financial education. And I'm not talking about balancing your checkbook and creating a budget. And in that case, many of us didn't get that. Well, I'm speaking about the American culture of debt. It's something that's relatively new in the State of the Union. It is a problem because, as far as I can pin it back, it really started in the 60s. There were mortgages, but they were 10 and 15 year mortgages. And people usually had a very hefty down payment to get into a house. We now have people who are indoctrinated into being into lifelong debt. It's not even a thought. It's like, well, I'll go out and get a car that's equal or greater than my yearly income. You know, it used to be that the most car they would finance for you was half of your income and that was really pushing it. Whatever your income was, they would finance a car up to that limit. And then we came up with these 60 month loans, 72 month loans, and you have this situation where your car is depreciating, but you still owe this amount of money on something that's no longer worth what you paid for it when you drove it off the lot. Part of the things that are happening with our culture are systematic. It's not a he or she or poor people or rich people thing. It's a systematic culture, credit card dependencies, getting a loan. For a long time, and this is what brought on the housing crisis, was you would buy a house, barely get into it, leverage that into a home equity loan and go out and buy a car. Many people use their houses as ATM, not just as places to live, nor to store wealth and build long-term value for generational wealth. That was like a far gone conclusion. People are drunk on debt. In this video, we want to address why and how to solve the problem. Just like you, I was in the military. I got my first credit card. I remember it was a first union bank visa and a MasterCard from Citibank. Man, they gave me $1,500 limit on both of them. I had $3,000 worth of credit. And I promptly went to Macy's and Riches and I bought clothes, sweaters, shoes. And this was after I bought my car because once I bought my car and paid on it for, I think, eight months, I started getting credit cards. All of a sudden, I didn't have to wait until payday. I didn't have to wait until it was the right time. I didn't have to save up money. I was just able to slap that car down and pow, I had it instantly. Do you know that is a, what's called a kick? It's called a mental kick. Every time you buy something, you get a mental rush. You get a little drop of dopamine. That's why you hear shopping therapy. It's a real thing. Well, people will go out and shop, they spend money and they get these dopamine kicks and they feel much better. Shopping therapy is real. And it is a symptom of the financial um, problem that we have as Americans. It, to a degree, it happens in Europe and Italy, but it, they're not as bad as we are. Kick is a part of the reason that many people are drunk on debt. And they don't even understand it. They just know when I buy something, I feel good. I was like, hey, this is cool. I'm going to keep doing it. Then you reach that point where you have no more credit. This is the weird things about addictions and credit can be an addiction. And for many people, it is an addiction. They're very hard to kick. What happens is you, you re literally rewire your mind because when uh, Mike posted on his page where someone was saying, I'd rather have an 850 credit score versus $600,000 cash. I was like, is the world going mad? Has the world gone crazy? And then I started to really think about this how we transformed from a very financially conservative society where people just did not buy things that they couldn't afford or the credit system was in place. Like if you went to the meat store and say the meat or the butcher would say, okay, I'll give you $50 a week. You can get your meat now, but you got to pay me at the end of the week. So the credit systems that were in place didn't allow people to get too deep. Because if you didn't pay the butcher that 50 bucks, he was like, he wouldn't give you no more meat. And then 50 bucks was something you usually could pay off fairly quickly and not exhaust yourself. America allowed people to get into a position where their credit score and the amount of their credit limit was a 
status symbol. This is why I don't, you know, I have very high credit limits, but I don't put them out there because I would never, ever charge my credit cards up to their limits. I mentally can't do it because I've kicked the habit and kicking the habit is very hard. This is why the first principle that I give you with money, income and profit is make more money. That's how you're going to get the things you want and stay out of debt. In that point where I was an E4 in the military here at Fort McPherson, I had maxed out my credit cards. I had a car I wasn't driving. All of a sudden I noticed I didn't have any money at the end of the month between paying off those two credit cards and paying the car note and paying the insurance. And I had absolutely no money. Everybody except George Fook was living that way. We all just sat there on the, by the parade field and just talk about it. It's like, hey, before I had this car, I had money. We knew what the problem was at the time. We just did not have the perspective or the understanding to understand the problem. So how does one kick this habit? You got to get real with yourself. First of all, uh, one of the reasons I'm giving you is a basic understanding of how this came out to be. It became an American phenomenon. For you to kick this habit, you've got to become somewhat exceptional. You've got to become part of that 0.5%, which is money's a tool. Once again, like I said, cut up your credit cards, don't close your accounts, pay them off, and start treating your credit card like a debit card. Now, this is why I feel that American Express products are probably the best that you could have. It's just you're restricted by your income because you know if you have an American Express green, you can only spend like maybe a thousand, two thousand a month, and that's it. So you don't get into this trouble. So that's the first stage recognizing that you're addicted. I know there are many people watching this video like, Glennon, I'm not addicted, I'm not addicted. What I want you to do if you're not scared is I want you to add up all of your credit payments, including your mortgage, including your cars, everything, Netflix, whatever you pay with a credit card, then compare and contrast that with your salary. And if that takes up most of your salary, you're beyond addicted you have the full-fledged disease. Someone asked me in the last live stream, how much of your income should you devote to housing? I said 10%. Now conventional American financial crisis management would say 30%, 40%, or 50% of your income should go for housing. I would vigorously disagree with that. Your housing needs should take up 10% of your income because as long as you're still on this 30, 40, 50% model, you're going to be perpetually broke. There's a lot of financial lifestyle advice on YouTube where they'll take a person's salary. Hey, in New York, how do they spend your money? And it's really interesting how many New Yorkers who have a high income have roommates or share some place to live because they know that it would take such a huge chunk of their salary just to live by themselves. That is crazy. Now that you know that you're addicted, and now you've done your budget, you've added up all of your bills, and you compare to kiss your salary, first thing you need to do is create a solid budget. If you're in financial trouble, you can't afford Netflix, you can't afford cable, you can't afford your cell phone. Get rid of everything that you have that you can get rid of. Some of these contracts got you locked in. I'm gonna say something, you might need to trade that iPhone in for a flip phone or one of their cheaper models. I know you won't have all the gadgets, but once again, when I wrote my first book and I came from a situation of high income to no income and living on savings, one of the first things I did was my, I had a Verizon account, which was month to month because I let the contract expire. I canceled my Verizon account because I didn't need the extra phones. I didn't need the air card. And I went to Metro PCS and I flashed my Razor phone to Metro because I knew I didn't need that. It was automatic, it was a fast decision. You have to start making decisions like that based upon your current income, not your potential income, not what you hope to make, but the cash money that you have coming in. Once you have this budget, once you've gotten rid of everything, you need to sit down and figure out what you can do to make extra money. Now, let's talk about what you can do to make extra money. I get a lot of questions. Hey, Glendon, what should I do? What's the hot thing? One of my big problems with Amazon buy merch and all of these, what I call trend businesses is they're trend businesses. 
As long as this trend is popping, it's hot, you can make money. But once it peters out, you're not making any money. You know how many people have built their businesses based upon trends and are surprised when the trend ends. Once again, like I said, my book, Storage Rocker Thing, I consider that a trend. Even though there's a lot of people who are still doing storage auctions, I just knew that this was not going to go on forever and ever and ever. I was sitting there like, I'm going to get while well, the getting is good. So never predicate your main hustle on a trend. You can use a trend to make some extra money, but don't get into debt on a trend. Get your money and start saving money and putting money aside so when that trend ends, you can get in on something else. Typically, what many people do with their side hustle is convert that into additional income to further their addiction to credit. Well, now <laughs> I can now get this $7,000 a month apartment because now I make extra money. No, <laughs> so that's not what you do. And this advice is for people who are financially underwater. If you're good, you got 10, 20, 30, 40, 100K, 200, 300K in the bank. I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking to 75 to 80% of the country who don't even have $500 in the bank. If you are a parent and you don't have $500 to $2,000 in a savings account, you are beyond negligent. If you got kids and you have no reserves, you are living a ticking time bomb. Something's going to happen. That kid's going to get sick. You're going to have to miss time from work. You need to establish. And let's talk about how much money should you save? Because there's a lot of things. Most of America doesn't have $500 to $2,000 in the bank. I talked about this before. I'm going to talk about it again. You need ten dollars to $20,000 in a savings account, not in the 401k, not on a credit card. You need ten dollars to $20K cash money in the bank. Now, people are like, well, that's too much. We're about to go through something and look at all of these government workers who are um, essentially working and not getting paid. Look at what's happening. They've missed one paycheck. This Friday, if this thing continues on, they're going to miss two paychecks. This is something that happens. Like with many of you, you have a job, you know this. You're responsible for paying part of your health insurance, right? At some point, that's going to become an issue if this thing keeps going on, where there are people in the 800,000 federal employees who no longer have a job. Multiply that by people who have families. So we're not talking about 800,000 people. We're talking about possibly two to three million people that are not getting a check. There are people who are sick. There are people who have cancer. There are people who cannot make their co-pays. The longer this goes on, someone can end up dying. And I'm not trying to be preach doom and gloom. I'm just giving you the facts because once again, the people, let's talk about this. There's the folks who are like, well, they only miss one check. I am shocked at the, it ain't even insensitivity. It is some people are so partisan that they don't even understand that if they started missing checks, that their life would be adversely part It was like, hey, look, you know, they're not really missing any check. Um, you know, it's only a week. Only a week? Most of America is two to three checks from financial ruin. They've missed one. We're coming up on two. If we get the three missed paychecks, you're going to have people filing bankruptcy. I am not joking. And we should look at this canary in the mind because we're in a recession. Retail is in a depression. And as this thing starts to filter on, I remember when I had my store, this guy who owned a pest control company, he came in to buy these bunk beds and mattresses because the mattresses were pissy. 75 bucks for his daughters. And he said, oh, I'll just get a mattress cover for that because this is all I can afford. I had to let, lay off 12 people. This is coming back. So you got to solve your problem of being drunk on credit. Now, I've said this and I've talked about it in many videos, but a lot of people haven't heard me. They just, they didn't hear me. I treat my credit card as a debit card. I've been doing this for years. You need to start adapting these money habits as soon as possible. Because let's say you have a job, but you have no debt. That's a whole different ball game than you have no job, you have no money, you got a mortgage, you got a car payment, you got cell phone bills, you got insurance, but you got all of these bills 
enough to keep people up at night. That's enough to put people in depression. America is drunk on credit. America has a systematic way of looking at money that is financially unhealthy. It just is. And if you keep living like this, it's going to catch up with you. We have 70 year old people filing bankruptcy because they don't have enough money to live on. These are people who, who houses are paid for. These are people who put money away. I'm going to do a special video on that, how 401k for most people isn't even close to enough. Most people are not saving 10, 15%. And here's some other stuff. Uh, I crunched some numbers, 10 to 15% of your salary. And let's say you get a generous match. So you're like saving 20% of your salary. You know where that puts you in retirement in your late fifties or early sixties at 20%. Um, as my was ranting and raving yesterday about this guy and his 2.5 million, I put $50,000 and I actually did the calculations with a 12% return for 10 years was a little bit over a million with a principal balance of 600 K. So we doubled our money in 10 years, investing 50 K. Now, if this was to go on for two years, then you get to the point where at 12%, which is not a consistent, it's going to average out at 8% because I hear people who say 10%, 12%. I did the numbers. Most folks are not getting 10% of their money. Most people are not getting 12% of their money. The average is 6 to 8%. So doubling what people normally get, you still don't come up with 2.5 million. What is happening is because people are drunk on credit, people are drunk on this financial system, that they have no solid perspective of money as a business owner or someone who has a side hustle or a side business, call it whatever you want to. You have to look at those numbers because if you're not looking at those numbers, you're not paying attention to those numbers. You're either in business or you're out of business. So you have a greater understanding of what the numbers should be or what they are. Whereas the average person, as long as I can make these payments, I'm good. Not really, not really at all. You got to come out of this. So the, I've given you three steps. Number one, accept the fact that you are a credit addict. Number two, do a solid budget. Number three, make more money. Do not make more money before you do the budget because it will be absorbed in your lifestyle. And then four, work really, really hard to be debt free as possible or close to debt free. Because once again, if you suffer some kind of crisis and you don't have debts, it's still going to be bad, but debt and additional fees and charges and stuff that can bury you. I had someone write me because they, they went ahead and they went to moneyincomeprofit.com and they didn't even sign up for anything because you know, the five checking account blueprint is free. You just go there, you look and you can go through it. And they did this and this woman is 45 years old and she said, God, I wish someone had taught me this sooner. And literally a few weeks, she's actually able to save money where she wasn't saving money before because no one's telling you this stuff. Only reason I know this stuff is I've been extremely poor. I know what it is like to want. I know what it's like to go to bed hungry. And I got out of that because it wasn't really the money I was making. It was how I was treating the money that I was making once I got to a certain point, because now I look back and I say, oh man, I could have did this, I could have did this, but I didn't have the knowledge to know how to do it. But now I do have the knowledge and I'm imparting this knowledge to you because you're gonna have to manage the money that you have coming in and you're gonna have to make more money. Once again, it's frame, you know, everyone's trying to shove what their desires and they wants in this small frame without really changing who they are. You're gonna have to change yourself financially. You just will. And you need to be a business owner or be self-employed in some capacity. This is mandatory. It ain't an option anymore. Jobs, mark my words, after this recession, many of the jobs that will be lost are not coming back. How do I know? Last recession, a lot of jobs disappeared, right? What came back? Not full-time jobs, part-time jobs. Uber, Amazon Flex, where are all these full-time high-paying jobs? They didn't come back. What happened was 
that the super technical jobs that you need to have some serious skills that pay 90 to 200 K a year. Most folks can't get those jobs because they don't have the skill sets. And then ain't that really that many. They'll say that, hey, we have a screaming need for these hundred and fifty thousand dollar year programmers. But if people went to school in within three years, they had enough. Guess what? The hundred and fifty dollar, hundred and fifty K a year programmer the price would drop to 90. That's how it works. Supply and demand. So you've got to figure out what you can do where you are, because if you've never made money online on your own abilities, it's going to be very hard. You know, you can use a platform such as Amazon or eBay or something like that, but making money from your own initiative where you run the traffic, where you run the marketing, where you create the content or the product, that's a different ball game. And that's what you should be working towards because those kind of businesses are hard to replicate by the masses. Yeah, some smart cookie can come along and duplicate your business, but it's going to be hard and you're going to have to spend some money. So just saying that, and speaking of spending money, to get your basic financial education, it's $75 one-time payment. And when I release the next session, you'll get a $75 discount on that. And we can go ahead and make money and grow together. Because right now, watch what happens to these 800,000 people who are working with no pay. TSA and JFK is clowning. They're playing No Sleep to Brooklyn, sicko on the PA systems. Now, when I was in the military, they would not let you take too much of your, mil your vacation. It was a certain amount you could take unless it was terminal leave, which means you were getting out and it didn't matter. If you were on leave too long, you would lose your military bearing. TSA has lost their military bearing. And what's going to happen in JFK? It's going to spread to other airports because this is kind of scary, but what if someone organized where it's like everybody just doesn't come to work? This country would ground to a halt. Nobody, I'm serious. You know, you think I'm kidding because when these, because you know they got together, this look, look I'm going to play No Sleep to Brooklyn on the PA system. That was a group conversation. That wasn't one person like, hey, I'm just going to play this. Anarchy spreads. And sooner or later, the longest this goes on, they're going to force Donald's hand because if everyone goes on strike at the same time, they ain't enough room to arrest everybody. They don't have the resources to arrest everybody. And believe me, people are talking about this because people are hurting right now. And you got a lot of political posturing on the behalf of Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell, because Mitch McConnell, he can go around Donald Trump and open up the government, but he's afraid of that base. So he ain't going to do it. Hopefully this thing will be worked out, but I don't think so. Because remember my opposition of Donald Trump being president before he even won the nomination. And remember what I said on this channel, I kept bringing up two things and people were just like, no one cares. Multiple divorces, multiple bankruptcies. What do these things indicate? Poor, personal character and a lack of responsibility. What are we seeing right now? I don't care. I'm going to get rid of this wife and get me another one. I don't care. I'm going to file bankruptcy and get out this jam and leave other people hanging. What's happening right now? Government shut down. These people don't get money. It's not going to impact him. It's not going to impact anyone he loves and cares about. It's just going to impact a bunch of people who are just like those ex-wives and those former business partners that he divorced and bankrupt on. Think about it. Like I said, many of the reasons that I felt that he would be a poor president, lack of experience is not one of them, and poor character, you're seeing it in living color right now. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Go below, enroll in your basic financial education, $75, one-time payment, you get that off of the next thing that drops, and there we are. See you guys in the next video. We did just what the home, 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 home. I was the black cat. Uh.
I used to have bad luck Now every girl wanna really matter that much A college dropout and if it don't add up A brother stayed on the move, glad I packed up slipping Falling on some X shit and I rhymed excess Line off, where the fuck the exit? Not that I want to, guess I must accept it And my flow is on lockdown, arrested Body bag beats, mark them off on the checklist All I need to get by, man, no method Too calm, I orchestrate such a fuse bomb Baghdad bars, he spit but be too calm 